Okay, in this last um, example that we did, we found the domain of this rational function. And we saw that by setting the denominator equal to 0, we found that negative 3 and 4 were holes in the domain. I want us to go ahead and look at this on a calculator. So I'm going to graph this function on our calculator screen. Now something that we have to keep in mind when we're doing this, our numerator here is just one single item, but we're dividing by more than one thing. So we have to put that entire denominator in parentheses, otherwise the calculator will do exactly what you tell it to, and that won't be proper. So back on my calculator screen in my Y1, I'm going to type in 6 divided by, now I'm opening up a parenthesis for the denominator, and I'm opening up a parenthesis for the X plus 3 term, and then I'm going to also put in parentheses the 4 minus X term, and then I'm going to have to close the entire denominator. Now let's do a zoom 6 and we'll see what this looks like. Um, now your calculator screen may not be showing these straight lines here and that's okay. Some of them do and some of them don't. In fact, if I move between a zoom 6 and to a zoom 4, now we no longer see those straight lines there. It's just kind of some quirkiness of the calculator. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, back on that zoom 6, let's look at that view of it. Here we said in our domain that x could not be negative 3 and it could not be negative uh, positive 4. Well, according to what this calculator is showing, we have actually a straight line here that looks like it's right about x equals negative 3. And then also we have another one over here that looks like it's right about um, x equals 4. The calculator is showing you those specific holes in the domain because they are more than just holes in the domain. They're actually very special things and they're actually called asymptotes. So let me go back uh, to our notes page here. Um, there is a difference between um, the domain of a function and then the vertical asymptotes. Um, the vertical asymptotes act like imaginary brick walls holding that graph back. So if, you, if you're looking at your calculator screen, if you happen to have that graph like we did a while ago, you can see that those two straight lines were holding back that graph from, um, from crossing over. It was something to that effect. Well, let's just go back here. Again, you can see these, it's almost like these are brick walls holding that graph back. This graph is approaching that, but it's actually never going to cross over it. Okay, let's talk about what the definition of a vertical asymptote is. We have this that says, this theorem that says a rational function in lowest terms will have a vertical asymptote some R number, some number, if that is a real zero of the denominator, that is if we have X minus R is a factor of the denominator Q of a rational function. In lowest terms, then R will have the vertical asymptote X equals small r. Okay, this can be taken down into simpler terms. Basically, when we're looking at a rational function, we're looking first of all at the domain. The domain is going to, most of the time, exclude certain numbers. Certain things can't be in the domain. Now, those numbers that we throw out of the domain are our potential vertical asymptotes. They may or may not be. The way we know whether they are or not is we have to look at the function in lowest terms. If we could factor and simplify this any, we could throw out one of those as being a vertical asymptote and only the one remaining would continue to be a vertical asymptote. We're going to work through some examples in the next um, video and I think that that will help to clear up what it is we're talking about.